that taught us of God the day we to day shall be met. Amen. Now shake the person and tell him you are welcome. Shake the person, shake the person and tell the person you are welcome. Give the person a nice hug. Hug the person and tell the person I love you with the love of the Lord. Give the person a hug. You can hug the person. You are too spiritual. Give the person a hug. Yeah. Stand up and hug somebody and tell the person I love you with the love of the Lord. Stand to your feet, go hug somebody, hug somebody. Don't hug the person whether you are married or not. Hug the person. Hug the person. Is hugging a sin? No, no. No. Praise the Lord. Because of our wickedness and our bad minds. Even in the book, in the books, in the books of the Bible, the Bible says we should kiss ourselves with the holy kiss. Yes. It means that when we come to church, we kiss about ten people before we close. Praise the Lord. Hugging is this expression of warm welcome. Praise the Lord. Okay, tell me first again. It's a long time I saw you. Oh, yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday is still a long time. Don't you know someone is dead in between yesterday and today? Somebody is dead and lost. Sometimes we take so many things for granted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we take too many things for granted. But 24 hours is still a miracle. How many of us have received a miracle? Show me your miracle. Prove it, prove it, prove it. Uh -huh. Some people, maybe you, you can't prove it. If you can't prove it, it's not a testimony. A testimony is that thing you can prove. Praise the Lord. So, every one of us here has a testimony. But, some people's testimony is always bigger than others. And those who always have the biggest testimony are able to shout and glorify God. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. If you couldn't fast with us, let me see your hand. You couldn't fast. Thank you. God bless you. Be on your feet and let's pray. Those of us that couldn't fast, be on your feet. Be on your feet, yeah. That's right. Oh, we are not finished. Let's pray before. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hand on your chest. Father, bless these ones as well. Give them the power that next time when we fast, they will all join us to fast. In Jesus' name, have I seen any blessings that you have for them? Amen. God bless you for not fasting. Now, I said that. Praise the Lord. But please, next time when we are fasting, join the trip. As for those of you who fast, give me a wave. If you fast, you are waving away your problems. You are waving away your sickness. I say, as you wait to the glory of God, you are receiving your testimony. Glory be to God. God bless you for fasting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see light all over here. Anytime there is light, darkness disappears. So I see your darkness disappearing. And I see the glory and the power of the Lord coming upon your life. And I can tell you, those of you even who are waiting to see before they believe, tomorrow by this time, 
you will see. Yeah. I say you will see. Yeah. I said you will see. Yeah. You see, Jesus is a miracle, Jesus. The way Jesus managed to walk with 12 disciples, Peter. I will deal with this subject next time. Peter. Who? Again. Bartholomew. Andrew. Thomas. Thompson. Say some of you two were Christian. Judas Iscariot. James. John. John. Matthias. Those of you at my right hand here, you came to church. We are talking about who? Philip. Uh -huh. Thomas. Thomas. All the disciples who was a nice man. Stephen. Stephen. Yes. Stephen. Yes. There is a class outside there. <laughs> I yeah, correctly said when he was in stone, he never was. Stephen uh, was an, um, wasn't a disciple of Jesus, but was a revivalist. Um, the fact this one, we will teach that class. We have a job, so we don't have to go for half. I understand, but today Stephen was not. The disciples or the apostles of Jesus, they were twelve. Now, they were they were the immediate people that walked with Jesus. They were twelve people. In fact, one day John the Baptist was baptizing, and then he saw a gentleman coming and said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin. That day, John the Baptist was having followers. If it were church, John the Baptist was having his members. And as soon as he said that, some of his disciples, church members said, Are you sure he's the Lamb of God? Lamb of God means that this is the desire that takes the sins of the world. And according to the account, it was Andrew, who was a follower of John the Baptist, a church member of John the Baptist. And then John the Baptist was preaching and said, Behold, this is the man of God that take away the sins of the world. That day, John Andrew said, Are you sure he's the Messiah? John the Baptist says, Yes. Then Andrew looked at John the Baptist's face and said, Today, I'm not coming to this church again. <laughs> he ran to the Messiah. If it were today, like me, I introduce the man of God to you. And then you go and follow that church. All the days of your life, I won't talk to you again. <laughs> Is that not what we are doing now? Yes. 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 Including me. Is it good? No. no. Is it good? No. 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 Andrew didn't know Jesus. It was his pastor, John the Baptist, that said, Behold! Is the one you are talking about. What am I wasting my time with you? Au revoir. Adios. Shoes. The next morning, as a village. And then the next morning, he became a disciple of Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he looked at Jesus and said, Master. Jesus said. He didn't ask him, Where is your church? He asked him, Where do you live? Where do you live? Why will I do you ask this question? Because I am moving from one church to your church. I need to check whether you have papers. I don't want to make a mistake. I will come and come and follow you to go today and tomorrow. So before I will follow you, where do you live? Where is your address? Why is your arm at Where do you live? 
Jesus said, follow me. He took him to his heart. And the Bible says, Andrew stayed with Jesus all the night. And the next morning, he went and called Peter and said, Come. Every time you see Christ, you need to talk to him, to others. Praise the Lord. Because when Andrew met Jesus, something changed in his life. Nobody will believe you unless the Jesus you are worshiping changes something of a lifestyle in you. Else nobody will follow you to church. I do you have the power, the ability, and the God to go and tell somebody, let's go to church. Can you tell me? Jesus. You see, now we are all growing. Those things, eh? If I was 
preaching in Ghana, and then this thing will be like this, we will find the devil. <laughs> in fact, this has nothing to do with the devil. This is the Jamaica. <laughs> We are testing our skills. Brother, don't worry. Let's go. We are used to. Oh God. Maybe the devil is at work or because I'm this <laughs> For all you know. Okay, I buy that spirit. This my mind spirit. Let's go on. If you are not disturbed, I'm not disturbed. Let's move on. Okay. So, you see, Jesus was working with 12 people, and all of them were having their different characters. Friends, in life, don't expect that everybody who will come into your life will act like you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the mistake most of us we do. All the time, before we will accept you, you need to dress like me. You need to talk like me. You need to act like me. Else, I'm not going to accept you. God is not giving me get that way. God makes some people tall. He makes some people short. He makes some people vertically challenged. And some vertically what? We are all not equal. So when we come into the house of God like this, you need to understand that there are certain behaviors that may be different from you, but yet we must learn to live in unity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Unity is not uniformity. I wish you would tear everything down so that I would get my peace to preach. You'll be bored. This is man power. That's right. <laughs> yeah. If you have never been there before, God, God gives you microphone, you will mess it up. Yeah. Mm. Preacher, I'll preach. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> in marriage, in society, people are different. But your ability to live with them determines how mature you are. Jesus was living with all these people. He did not complain. He managed them in life to get the best of people. You need to have the ability to manage different people. Sometimes some people come to church and it's like, oh, this person, he talks too much. I cannot be friends with the person. Hmm. Yes, that person talks too much. Maybe you do, you have your own problem. You do you sleep too much? <laughs> or maybe you eat too much. Everybody has one thing. Yeah. That is not good now. Yeah. So when you see my fault, don't go and condemn me. Yeah. Everybody has an issue he is dealing with. Maybe yours has not been exposed. One day God will expose your own. Yeah. And you will understand. People. Jesus was moving with a whole lot of people. But all of them, one of them was also called Judas Iscariot. Another character. Jesus didn't suck him. One day Jesus prayed all night and was choosing 12 people to follow him, to do his work. He chose Peter, he chose James, he chose Andrew, and when he was choosing, the man was looking at him. And he said, you two come. And the name of that man was called Judas. In the same when Jesus called him, he was not a betrayer. He was a disciple. Judas will come into your life initially not as a betrayer. They will come into your life as friends and as disciples. But when Jesus brought him closer, when he began to know some secret about Jesus, then he said, You, I can make you die. 
today. There are some people you are bringing into your life, they think they can make you die. But whom God has blessed. Anyone that will dress, that person will die before you. Amen. I said, anyone that will die, that person will die and you shall be You know, when Jesus, when Peter and Judas betrayed Jesus, before Jesus died, the guy had already hung himself. There are some Judases, don't fight them. Let them betray you. Continue to love them. They think they are harming you. They think they are destroying your life. But they are all putting their rope. One day, they will hang themselves. And they shall die before you. Amen. To announce a blessing over you. Now, any Judas that has come into your life to betray and to destroy your destiny, let that person die before you. Amen. I'm not interested about all those characters. One person that I love him among the twelve is Brother Thomas. Look at that person sitting next to you and say, Are you Thomas? Or Thomas Tina? Sisters, make sure you don't marry Thomas. Brothers, make sure you don't marry Thomas Tina. How will I know? The brother looks like a Peter. Some people may look initially like a Peter. But inside them, why do I love Brother Thomas? If you read the Bible accounts, one day, when Jesus died, all of them will pray that. When Jesus was alive, he said he would die. Mm-hmm. And then he shall resurrect again. Mm-hmm. So when they were praying, they were praying that God, that when Jesus said, let him not be alive. Let him resurrect. Let him resurrect. Let him resurrect. Let him resurrect. But if you read the Bible account, the Bible says one day the disciples got it. <laughs> The disciples captured one day, and when the disciples captured, Thomas was not there. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody said Thomas was not there. Thomas was not there. Oh, somebody said Thomas was not there. Thomas was not there. When they left, Thomas was not there. And when Thomas came, the disciples now told Thomas. When Thomas came to the death, the disciples were to they were jubilating and Thomas was looking at them funny Thomas people when you are happy they look at you funny Thomas was looking at them funny what is happening and they said Thomas you won't believe it Jesus has resurrected he looked at them again and said what did you see him he said he came here as for Thomas Listen to what he said. He said, Unless I see and touch it. Oh, who is the Bible student here who can turn up there if you um and then you, you read so that people will know that I'm not I'm not I'm not saying test out. I won't believe it. <laughs> oh, Thomas, you people were 12. 11 people are saying. One is gone. 11 people at that time. At that time, one is gone, and Judas was gone, and Matthias has replaced. So at that time, 11 people were saying that they are praying for God has done it. And Thomas said, unless. I won't believe it. <laughs> Do you know what it means? If Jesus has resurrected and the wounds Thomas saw before Jesus died, if that wounds have been healed, Thomas said, 
I won't believe it. Unless I read it. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Rise in your tongue, rise in your mind. Look at my hand and my feet. It is I myself. Touch my touch me and see. A ghost does not have a flesh and your blood. And when he has said this, he showed them his hand and his feet. And while they still did not believe, it's because of joy and encouragement, he asked them, Do you have anything to eat? Then he met with them. Let me proceed. Let me proceed from there. Now, Thomas said, everybody is saying about that testimony, but unless I, Thomas, unless I see, I won't believe it. And Jesus suddenly appeared and said, Thomas, here I am. Jesus showed him his hand. And Thomas truly Upon you may see Jesus, it wasn't enough. He truly used his finger to touch. And when he saw it, he said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Thomas, Thomas, now you have seen, you believe. But I'm telling you, Thomas, blessed are those who they have not seen it. But yet, Amen. There are always two people in the church. People who want to see before they believe. And people who want to believe and they see. If you want to see before you believe, you are not a Christian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you want to see before you believe, you are not what? Because that said that just shall live by faith. By faith, I declare that that thing the doctor said about you, God has healed you. Yes. You are not here by faith. That thing you are looking for, it is no more than that problem you are going through. That thing you are suffering, that problem you are going through. By faith, I declare that it is over. Amen. Amen. Somebody shall get it and somebody shall miss it. Because of your faith level, I declare that may the blessing and may the glory of the Lord overshadow you. You have seen, you believe. Thomas followed Jesus, but he was not a believer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have unbelieving believers. Mm -hmm. We have so many people that come to church every Sunday, but yet they don't believe. Hmm. Do you believe God can heal you? Yes. yes. Do you believe God can heal you? Yes. Do you believe that thing you are looking for God can do it for you? Yes. Do you believe God can touch your husband? Yes. Do you believe God can bless you? Yes. According to your faith, let it be unto you. Yes. I said, according to your faith, may you receive it. Yes. And Jesus showed Thomas, and now Thomas has become a believer. And I said, Jesus. Why would you do this thing to Thomas? Are you encouraging us to also do like Thomas? And Jesus said, no. I am not encouraging unbelieving believers. But I am doing this to become an example that if you are a Christian, don't argue. You only have to believe. Oh, amen. Whatever you believe, the Bible says God is able to do. And suddenly, abundantly, far more that you are expecting. Amen. Whatever you believe in your heart today, may the God you serve, let that God do it for you. Yes. I don't care what the doctor said. I am telling you what our God is able to do. He can heal you. He can touch you. He can give you a miracle. He can perform a miracle for you. According to your faith, tomorrow by this time, that thing you are waiting for, the Lord God Almighty shall do it for you. Yes. God bless you. 
If you believe there are so many struggles, you will not go through. Thomas, whatever they are, they always want to be the ones that would underline. Everybody will say it's good. Thomas people will say Somebody will cook in the house, all the children will be saying, ah, what a cook. Papa, you have done well, you have cooked well. <laughs> and the mother will say, is this a food? <laughs> That's Thomas. Every day, they say it is well. Before everybody believe it is well. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Jesus was working with all these people. He did not complain. In life, let me tell you, Sometimes, people will tell you what is opposite of your life. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you, you have not experienced that thing before. That sometimes, you look yourself in the mirror in the house when you were coming to church. And you were like, oh wow, today is good. And the first person that met you at the gate. Made you feel like you were naked. <laughs> and it's like you were confused. Um, is, it, is, it, is it true? Is oh, it no. true or? Please, when the Lord says yes, yes, you have to believe in yourself. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we wait for people's approval. No. You need to always be happy with yourself yeah. and trust in your God oh. so that the remaining of your life, God shall do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't always wait for the appraisal of men. Don't. It's good for men sometimes to say, well done. Ah, sister, you are looking good. But God created you in his what? In the image. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God. When no man was there to call him God, he was calling himself God. You don't need anyone to praise you if you can praise yourself. You don't need anyone. You see, you see that the problem many of us are going through now. Every time you are proposed to say, you are looking good, you are doing well. Whether I am doing well or doing bad, when you tell me it's good, but the right information that I need is what God is saying. Oh, yes. And when God says yes, nobody can say no. Sometimes, if you are looking for people to encourage you, the person that you want to encourage you, that person is even discouraged. Yeah. Having two experiences that sometimes the way the mood you were before seeing that doctor, you came back worse. Yes. Praise the Lord. Uh, so by the time you are going to see the doctor, as a believer, lay your hand on yourself, declare that by his stripes. So whilst you are going to the doctor, you are only going to hear the confirmation. When he said otherwise, the book of Isaiah chapter 53 says, whose report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. Today, I tell you, you are not what people are saying you are. Amen. You are not what people are saying you are. Your children are not what people are saying they are. Your children are what God says they are. Praise the Lord. Praise so you gotta be happy and know that your Redeemer is dead. These three days that we have revived ourselves, I want you to revive your family. Don't go and live the old life. Let there be changes. So that Andrew brought people to Christ, your life can also lead people into Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.